Stevie B. Look, you're blurry. Bradford <laughs> Anderson, ladies and gentlemen. Look, we never get to do this together anymore. I, I know we're in the same we're in the same Zoom window. Usually we are in different Zoom windows, but uh, we're on the road. And so we're mobile podcasting, if you will. We are mobile podcasting. And uh, I needed a favor because we wanted to have a guest. You yes. know, um, Beyond Salem part two came out this week and I got to work with this guy and he was just such a great guy. Mm. Like just so cool, so welcoming. And it was a pleasure to get to work with him. And we had an incredible fight scene Ooh. that maybe we could talk about a little bit. Cause this dude beat me up a lot. And, uh, Oh, I can't, I, I want to, can we, can we make the whole episode about that? Sure. We can. So, uh, <laughs> thank Christopher, Sean, thank you, brother, for joining us. We really appreciate it, man. Uh, as I was saying earlier, man, it is an honor. Steve Burton, when anytime Steve Burton says he needs you, you better be there. You well, better is, be there. Is that just out calls. of is that out of fear or reverence? Well, I couldn't tell. That, that is that is because he's a legend. He's a living oh, legend. He My is old. Family right, knows him. He's yeah. amazing. No, not old. He's just, <laughs> everything he does is 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 epic. <laughs> well, thank you, dude. That's you're way too kind. And, it's, and none of that's true, but I love you anyway. And uh, so so I so you, you work together on Beyond Salem. Um, now I've heard his I've heard his take. Yeah. And and talking about how wonderful it was to walk in. Now, what were the whisperings before he walked in? Is the thing was what I want to know. Oh. Is like is like uh, oh that 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 hot shot from General Hospital is coming over here. He's gonna he's gonna expect to run the show. He's gonna boss us all around. What would <laughs> would you expect? Or he's gonna make us work out. He's gonna take his shirt off. What like what it what, yeah, what were the we whisperings? We were all doing burpees. We were doing burpees, <laughs> waiting for him to walk in just to impress him. No, um, <laughs> I mean you know it was one of those things where. Uh, I, I had heard that Steve Burt was there and then I saw him actually on the monitors downstairs and I was like, no way. He's amazing. Like he's incredible. Uh, so I was really excited. And then I found out we were working together and I was even more excited. And then um, we started doing choreography. I don't know how many hours that we were like kind of working that scene. Really? But, uh, yeah. Most of the yeah. morning while we had like 28 pages of dialogue, while we were, oh, I had 28 pages. Yeah. I was dealing with the fight choreography. I was trying to make sure that Steve and I had a, a, a relationship that permeated the screen. So trying to sit and talk with him as much as I could. And the more that I, I spoke with him, the more that I was like, I'm like a huge fan and grandstanding for you because truthfully, everything that you do, the non-negotiable deals that you have, the contracts that you have with yourself to be able to do those burpees when you're exhausted and to continue to push through. I was like, okay, I have so the utmost respect for you. So like I already knew exactly who you were and and for me it was so easy to work with uh, your talent um but yeah you're right like when when Steve showed up everyone was talking about like holy moly we got talent holy moly it's gonna be a great episode like so it was like it was incredible I was, I was so honored and um I told my lady about it and um her sister Annette Hansen is like one of your super fans so i showed some pictures like you know <laughs> that i got from us and she was literally screaming like oh my god oh my That's god awesome. you have the coolest job he's gorgeous i was like i know and i touched him he's so gorgeous <laughs> dude not only did you touch me you threw me around like a rag doll so <laughs> let's get to let's get to our fight scene because you know has this aired yet it, yes, it aired the first episode. Oh, the was, first episode. The first, yeah, it was in. Okay. Yeah. So this yeah. this podcast will come out either today or tomorrow, whichever, yeah. whenever Bradford deems worthy. Um, but <laughs> you know, we're four episodes in on Beyond Salem. But our first, and he's not lying. Like we spent so much time uh, choreographing the uh, the fight scene, and it's usually you know because I've done a lot of them, and he has a background in part. This guy's an animal with parkour and martial arts. Right? Parkour. Come yeah. on. Yeah, dude, the guy's a beast. So it's like, is there any cool YouTube videos of you doing parkour that we can like, I, I just want to die. And do you say, do you have to say parkour when you jump? Like when you do you jumps, do you I have said, to go parkour. If you don't say it, then you're not doing it right. That's, That's right. All okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so usually when we get people who come in, when I was on general hospital, you get people come in who want to do stunt fights and they go, oh yeah, I, I know martial arts or I box. That's when I get worried. That's when you're going to get hit. That's when you're usually going to get, that's when I get hit the most is with people who actually fight, you know? So it was awesome to work with him because he was super controlled and, you know, the, the core, the, the choreographer with the stunt guy was a coordinator was awesome. And they really took the time. We really got to rehearse this, the stunt scene, the, this, the scene. And, and what was crazy about the scene was <clears throat> it was such a long fight scene. It was, it was, 
and and we went through it and they had stunt guys so we were going to go christopher and i were going to do this first and i don't well we might tell the whole story or not but um we were going to do this first <laughs> and and um and they were going to give us a couple takes at it and then they were going to bring the stunt guys in sure right, to do it um can i guess what happened you guys did it so well they're like oh we don't need this well these stunt men we don't need these stunt men look look at what we have no, no that's okay. not actually what happened at all not but we did it very well <laughs> yeah but then uh, you know one of the stunt guys had a little bit of a snafu and they oh. couldn't really finish everything okay. and it's funny because when i was doing the scene there was one where Christopher kicks me against the wall and I'm supposed to, you know, swipe stuff off a, you know, a table to make it more dramatic. Right. And the first time we did it, I didn't get, I didn't get to do that. The second time I did it, I, I was going by, I go, Oh shoot, I got to do this. And I hit this thing and I cut my finger, dude. Do you? And, and I was yeah. bleeding. It was deep. Per, Bro, profusely. Deep. Like, yeah. and I'm bleeding and I go, I cannot stop this scene. Like I can't stop. And I, and we're, we're, you know, we're grappling, we're doing stuff and I just see blood all over her sweatshirt. I'm like, Oh my <laughs> gosh, I don't know if they're going to see it and go cut, but they didn't cut. And, yeah. you know, we did the scene and, you know, and then they're like, Hey, Stevie, all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Meanwhile, I'm like losing gallons of blood out of my hand. So, and they're like, you okay? I go, yeah. And Cause you know, anytime you get a scrape, they're like, can you get the nurse? I'm like, nah, it's, I'm fine. It's sure, be sure, fine. sure, sure. But Anyway, dude, it was a pleasure doing that fight scene with you. And, and it was dude, just so you're, you're down. He, I mean, yeah, he's still downplaying. And <laughs> so there's one stipulation to the whole thing. We have one table. Do not break the table. <laughs> dude, it was yeah. a breakaway, right? Yeah. And it was just gingerly set up on four legs. Oh, because were you one of you was supposed to throw the other one into the table? At the end of the yes. scene. Yes. Correct. Ah, yes. But the problem was I had this hat on because I was a cop. One of my disguises. You look great in hats. Thank you. And I hate hats. And so I'm doing the fight and I go, I got to get this damn hat off. So right before he, he kicks me against the thing and, and right. I come back and I take the hat off and I throw the hat and I wing the hat and it hits a leg of the table. It breaks the table? It breaks the whole table. It just falls table. apart, bro. We the have one table and it falls apart. <laughs> because of a hat. Dude, the hat hit it and the thing just went, just shattered. Who is that cat? Who is that villain? Was it in Dick Tracy or, like, no, or, or something? Whose hat like... Is, is chop people's heads off chop, like, no, that was it, james bond i think james oh it was james bond like that's what happened to the bond. table and they like, they had to bring go ahead dude he was basically yeah they brought the whole team in and they came in they're super gluing doing everything they can the table just kept falling over I'm telling you when i say steve burton's a legend he breaks tables with hats excuse me <laughs> <laughs> <So stupid. laughs> oh yeah. uh, he's, so funny. Loud. he's a peaky blinder he's just going for it no that's but funny, so dude. after that happened um afterwards they were like uh, yo, see Sean, like, I don't know, should we have you throw the stunt guy, uh, you know, Steve Burton stunt double uh, through the table? And I was like, yes, I can still do it. And we practiced that over and over and over for another hour prior. Well, during the, the, the snafu, I was practicing. Come on, come on, we can do this. And then right. um, Mark Ruffalo's stunt double. This guy's amazing. Anthony. Uh, yeah, Anthony. Yeah. He, awesome he was like, yo, we're good, man. We're good. Let's go. Well, we can do this. Yeah. You know? Wait a second. So the, the, the stunt court, the stunt, the stunt man for Steve was Mark Ruffalo's stunt. No, man? different guy. No, no, no. he's a totally. No, he was dude. actually he was actually just there. Yeah. Had some under five work. Oh, I see. And and they needed a stunt new stunt guy. So yeah. he's like, okay, I'm in, right? And Anthony's exactly. awesome. Exactly. And afterwards, we stepped up. We were able to do it. And um, my uh, this rainbow sweater that I was wearing because my character's gay in the show. This rainbow sweater okay, I was yeah, wearing, yeah, yeah. colorful and just blotches of blood all over it i was like look this is you bro this is you oh, <laughs> it was that's and, crazy. I, so funny. and i did and he follow, showed it to yeah. me oh so i don't remember which finger it was but it was i was yeah, like was dude bad. that's are you okay deep. it's like no fine fine i was like yeah so, i was like wow. no dude that's bad You're but i did stitching. volunteer for him to slam me on the table that's so funny i was like i'll just do it i'll just and albert the executive <laughs> producer like steve <laughs> calm down you, we do not need to slam you on the table just relax yeah. i go but come on man this is Let's what i'm here for yeah so let me ask you, christopher how long were you on days uh four years four years and then you took you, then you left the show right yeah um and then, then I, I i booked uh my so three my first three years i was filming y50 and days of our lives my uh -huh. last year I was the I became the main villain on Hawaii Five O seasons five and six, which is awesome. So I got to yeah, fly amazing. back and forth between Days of Our Lives and Hawaii Five O. What a what a three life! Weeks on, yeah, three weeks on, one week off. My one week off, I fly out. On um, my last year, 
I booked Star Wars Resistance, uh, the lead of, uh, of a series, which is awesome. And then, um, so I was like, all right, cool. I'm in Star Wars. I have a character. It's canonical to the main storyline. This is amazing. I'm going to take off and see where my career takes me. Um, and then. And is that a cartoon? From, is that animation? Yes, that was an animated project. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's on Disney Plus now. It was on Disney and Disney XD. And then awesome, they transferred dude. it to, uh, to Disney Plus. And when they did, then the show got canceled. And I was like, no. Oh, oh boo. Yeah, from there, I, um, I, I, I did uh, NCIS LA. <clears throat> and then I booked uh, Nightwing on Gotham Knights. And so I've been, I was filming that for like two and a half years. It's a video game. Not the oh, television. Okay. It's completely yeah, separate projects. Right. So I was like, cool. Okay. So um, flying back and forth to Montreal, doing performance capture, where I get to wow. do martial arts, and yeah. I get to be the first Asian American voice of, uh, of of DC superhero Nightwing, which is that Batman is so and Robin. Cool. Robin yeah. grows up and becomes his own superhero, Nightwing. Amazing. I've always dude. been infatuated with that character. Oh, so that's so how that Night so awesome. Night Nightwing is just grown up Robin. Yeah, the original Robin, Dick Grayson, grows up. And then That's Batman amazing, had multiple dude. Robins. So Jason Todd was number two. He's Red Hood. Uh, number three, I think, is uh, there's like a couple others. But in our project, it's yeah. Nightwing, Red Hood, Tim Drake, Robin, and Batgirl. So the four of us <clears throat> step in because Batman's killed and we protect Gotham City. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. But no, no, it's, it's, it's <laughs> everywhere. No, it's everywhere. <laughs> no, I know it is. <laughs> I gotta go. That man dies. <laughs> Take no. that out. <laughs> no, um, Take that out. But yeah, so uh, there's that Gotham Knights, and then there's uh, Star Wars Resistance. I did NCIS LA, uh, an episode about stopping Asian hate with as much racism and prejudice that's been going against the Asian American community. Um, Kyle Harimoto, the executive producer on the project, he wrote this amazing piece. And I was, I was just like, oh, I, I was like actually on set and I was like, I, this is kind of embarrassing. I'm on set and I'm like, yo, who wrote this? This is an amazing episode. I want to find out who wrote it. And they're like, oh, Kyle did, Kyle did. Not knowing his status. I didn't know status. he was the executive like, producer. Hey, really like, great job, writer. Kyle. Really great job. Yeah. yeah, I was like, yo, Kyle, this, this script, it actually made me cry. It's really good. And he's like, well, then uh, do it justice. And I was like, yeah, oh, bro, I will, yeah. of course. <laughs> and I, I didn't know he's the executive producer, like I said. Right, and sure, said, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. As we're filming on the day, I found the guys who beat my, my father up and put him in the hospital. So I got the gun on the guy and I'm looking at him. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to take you out. Right. Yeah. LL Cool J, Chris O'Donnell, Chris O'Donnell, original Dick Grayson, Nightwing. Right. Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So uh, LL Cool J and he goes, put the gun down. And I'm like, I'm supposed to just drop the gun. But I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to hold this gun on him. Like, I'm going to, I'm like, am I going to actually pull it? So I'm sitting there holding it on him and I'm looking at him. And he's like, I said, put the gun down. And then they're like, cut. And he's like, man, what the? How, how many takes is this guy going to not listen to me? Like, what's going on? You know, and I was like, oh. Uh -uh. I walked over and he was like, hey, hey, that was really good, man. Keep that up. You know? <laughs> I was like, funny. thanks. Afterwards, That's I get awesome. an email from Kyle. He's like, uh, you actually did a really good job. Let me take you out to lunch. We have lunch at the Soho house. And he's like, uh, I was like, my treat. He's like, no, my treat. <laughs> <laughs> And then I go to find out after looking him up. I didn't look him up prior. I should have. Uh, he was the executive producer. I just thought he was a writer. And I was like, you know, yeah. oh, wow. shooting it with him. And we're trying to be yeah. casual. Well, uh, I was like, that hey, sometimes that takes the pressure off. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. they might have served you, right? To yeah, totally. like Absolutely. to not be like, you know, like. But you, but you know what? I, I, I'm kind of me at this point. Like, I, nothing's sure. going to change me. Whoever you are, like, yeah. I have respect. Like, believe me, I have the utmost respect for Steve Burton. But I'm still going to kind of be my childish, like, of course, whatever, of course. myself, right? Like, yes. Um, because I, I, I know Steve Burton, I I've seen his face everywhere. And then to work with him, I'm like, Holy cow, dreams come true. This is weird. You know, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's what Bradford used to think. I say it. Every, now he's just, I say it now he's just a jaded old soap queen. So he's just like, <laughs> yeah, whatever this guy, get this guy out of my shot. We're in a two shot. Dude, he's trying to get me out. Like, he's trying to get over here. Like, the end of the episode be like this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, happens, yeah. man, when you're doing, when you're working, when you personal train your homies, and they start. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, I haven't yet. But. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, my, hey. my, my shoulders are getting too big for a two I shot. I know. Yeah. That's right. yeah, yeah. What, is, that, um, is that the filter? Or is that you, bro? I don't yeah, know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you, you figure me out. You figure me out. So what? What I? What was interesting in in hearing you kind of recount, you know, the last you know, the last few years is your in your mind your projects are like 
so in my head, I'm like, is that is that voiceover? Is that on camera? But in your head, like those are so seamlessly in, in seamlessly entwined in terms of your career and how you approach your career. Um, has it always been like that? Has voice always been such a prevalent part of your career? Honestly, no. Um, during the pandemic, I was like, what are we gonna do? You know, obviously we can't be on set much at all. Um, and voiceover was perfect because I have an in-home studio. And honestly, dude, voiceover fell in my lap. I didn't have uh, any voiceover credits at all. I had yeah. my very first voiceover audition. And I've been asking for like six or seven years. Hey guys, like I'd love to do voiceover. Right. And, and they just kind of overlooked me. My, my very first audition, I auditioned for the red line in Voltron, Steven Yen. He booked the role over me, the Walking Dead uh, Academy Award winning nominee. Uh, so, yeah, and I was you, like, you, you, of course, yeah, right? right yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and I and I bow to him. He was a, he was such one of the kindest people I met. I actually met him while he was filming Invincible, and I was filming Gotham Knights. Anyway, really, really cool cat. Um, but during the pandemic, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna work. Uh, and I booked you on Netflix, the number seventh most watched series on Netflix history, with 657 million views in the first 30 days. Wow. Um, yeah, it was amazing. So I was kind of like, you know, I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on. Voiceover had saved my butt because like I said, I did the one audition, I got to producers, nothing happened. Then all of a sudden Lucasfilm calls and they're like, we want to meet you for a role. And I was like, whoa. And that led to the lead of Star Wars Resistance. Yeah, and so, so they just, they knew yeah. your work. They knew your previous work from that <clears throat> YouTube show and is, no, how did not you- at all. Honestly, dude, they, they had done, I think they had done four world like auditions looking for someone to be this project and then Amazing. they just happened to stumble upon my profile somewhere like i think they were just kind of like literally give us your whole catalog at this agency and we'll just see ah, who we yeah. can find you know <laughs> yeah, um, yeah yeah that's like yeah like Lindsay harper uh she's the she was the head casting director she is so awesome and she she literally like changed my life wow her and the that's... entire team at, at uh, star wars uh, hey man it's meant to be brother yeah that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So, so that's how you got into, that's how you got into voiceovers, but give us a little mm-hmm. background on uh, how you got into to acting in the first place. So my dad, he was in the Navy and he, when he would be deployed, he'd record himself on camera. And I tell this story often. So I apologize. You guys have heard this. No, no, it's no, great. I, dude. We, yeah. I haven't heard it. So, great. It's yeah, good. Let's yeah. Go. so, so my dad would, uh, he would record himself reading me and my two sisters, my older sister's stories. And uh, we get this large package in the mail. And, uh, you know, you always get excited because dad could yeah. be gone for a couple of days or months at a time. He was on the USS Tripoli and the USS Midway. <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. So, You're good. Um, yeah, so we get this package and they're in the, in the, you know, in the little beta tape, I think. And we're watching my dad as a whole, you know, I'm aging myself. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And my dad's reading his stories and, and he's like reading, reading. And I'm watching my dad on television and he's like, hey, Christopher, sit down. And I'm like, how do you know I'm standing? <laughs> like, what? He's like, magic. So this, this magic, this, you know, I was like, yeah. that, I want to be just like my dad and he's on television. And then my mom would have the camera. She's like, well, this is how you do it. Right. So she's recording us. And, and me, I'm always being like my cheesy self, like, Hey dad, I'm going to be big and buff like you one day. Yeah. You know, this oh pompous, God. like seven year old, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was always my dream. And I was okay. extremely introverted, extremely shy. Um, um, but yeah, and I kind of overcame that, you know, military father, Japanese mother, and, and both of which are like, be seen, not heard. You wait, you be respectful, you say your please, please and thank yous. Um, yes, miss, yes, uh, sir, yes, ma'am. I used to answer mm-hmm. the phone, hi, this is the Friel residence, how can I help you? Sure. <laughs> like, what? You know, um, <laughs> that's how I got into acting. I started off, I tried to model, and okay. I sucked at it. I booked nothing, because I was too shy. Um, oh, interesting. Mm. I, I did uh, a couple of reality TV shows, and then I started doing beauty pageants. I won a few beauty pa- a couple of beauty pageants. Uh, Mr. Wow. H USA. They flew me to China. I represented America, uh, USA West in China, and the Manhunt International. I think two thousand five or six. Wow. I took top fifteen and Mr. Personality, and that's when hey. I knew it was like, you know, what? it's hey, not that, about that, the look. Was, right? was that the breakthrough? Was that the breakthrough for personality? Like for you not to you know, be an introvert? You know what? It was always like I was, I was, I needed the acting classes. And I thought okay. that if I went and I got these, these uh, titles, I could then parlay them 
into getting representation management and I can get, you know, like, I was like, I need something. I, I can't just sure. go out there and I have to have something. Right. So I did that. I got an, an agent and I started taking acting classes and I, mm-hmm. my agent, my acting class is kind of a, a gimmick at the time. Cause it was like, you know, there's, there's the blacklist. And if you're not good, you're going to be put in those folders and they'll never see you again. So mm-hmm. I was like, Oh crap. So I, I need right. to, need to really like practice so I stayed in that class for two three years before I even went out for auditions wow. you know I just oh, wow. worked and grinded and worked um and I was doing a lot of scenes every single day so I, I attribute my my um my openness and my candidness and my my confidence to that class because truth be told uh my very first time on stage I, my hands were shaking and they told me to read oh, off yeah. the paper but my hands were shaking so much I couldn't read the words and I was just like, I'm so sorry. Like I put the paper down and breathe and I, and I have to do it again. And, and I remember telling him um, that was the most embarrassing thing in my life. I was humiliated um, and I'm never going to allow that to happen again. So Interesting. what's the fastest anyone can make it into your master's class? And he was like, uh, what? Like after that performance, take it easy, pal. And I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, really tell me like, what's the fastest? And he says, uh, two years. And I said, I'll do it in six months if you give me the opportunity. And he's like, no, I said, give me six months. If I falter one time, you can boot me from the entire class. Uh, and he was like, okay. And I get it in six months. I made it to his master's class. So wow. that was oh, man. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah, it was incredible. I worked my butt off. I was doing like, uh, basically you get up on stage and you were kind of puppeted. It was like, uh, okay, say this line here, say the line here, say the line here. You can have this emotion, this emotion, this emotion, try this, tag face, drag face as you leave scene, done. And so I was like, okay, cool. But I think I needed that in my life because I was too afraid to make choices. So So once I figured out his way of acting, I knew what he was going to tell me to do in every scene. Then I started making Mm -hmm. it my own. Very Bruce Lee uh, discipline. Take what works, discard what doesn't, then make it your own. And after leaving that class, um, I joined other classes like Anthony Mindel and Lewis uh, Smith, Lewis Smith and Margie Haber, and all of which were basically like, what was your intuition saying? What, what were you really feeling in that moment? Why didn't you go on that rather than say with the lines, with fuck the lines, go with that. And yeah. it's like, you're right, you're right. So you start making more like intuitive choices more so yeah. than what you think the lines are saying or dictating. Right. That's an interesting foundation for, you know, yeah, it it, it, I mean, was, was now on the other side of it, knowing, you know, knowing what the ultimate goal, but was it about teaching tech, like, um, just instructing basic like film tech? I mean, like what was he trying to, in giving you those prompts, like what was the, was it just getting comfortable in- Or, make, or making a choice. I, Not like looking at it from what Chris just said. It's like, if when I was beginning, when we're all beginning, sure. right? Like you're just kind of flailing and you, you're not sure you're hesitant and, right. you know, in emotions or making choices. And it's an interesting take because I've never heard this take in all my years talking about acting of someone giving basically line readings right to yeah. some degree it's a yeah it's color by numbers right so yeah. this is yeah. you're gonna really feel this you're gonna feel this and it's like uh and it's everybody like it, has to learn I'm and sorry. it seems like it will build your confidence faster to be quite honest like <laughs> if you can get to that emotion you go oh i could do this okay here's the next one I okay agree. and then and then the intuitiveness can come in but if it I does agree. the intuitive does intuitiveness does it if you're not I guess, smart enough to pick what works for you from each person, right? Each teacher and make it your own. You could be in trouble the other way too. Yeah, I mean, one of the big red flags for me is this. If I look and I see someone in their class that's been going for 10 plus years and they're not working, I'm like, that's a tell. That's where I'll be, you know, if something's wrong here, right? Um, you should be able to, 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 mark your successes and your growth as an actor you should be able to say okay i'm no longer just listening to oh my god steve oh my god no, i know <laughs> so unprofessional spam I'm risk should I, should no I but you should, yeah, be able yeah. to, you should be able to 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 measure your success you should be able to see like okay i'm my intent am i actually accomplishing my intent how will i react according to that intent positively yeah. negatively you know in those reactions that's where uh, the awards are won 
that's where Steve Burton's holding those Emmys. You know, that's those are those moments, right? But Piper hates <laughs> this episode more than anything he's ever done in his life. Uh, he hates this. He's really gonna edit. He's gonna that. chop Christopher. Oh, he's gonna chop this down so much where I'm gonna be not even in the episode. It's gonna be amazing. So <laughs> listen, you have great work ethic, apparently. Um, <laughs> he does. Yeah. He no. Yeah. I agree. So great. when when did kind of where did you grow up first? Uh, dad was in the military, so born in Washington State, moved to the Philippines, went back and forth to Japan to see my family in Japan from the Philippines, Subic Bay, yeah. uh, Mississippi, visited my grandparents in Ohio, all over Southern California. That's Southern California is home. Mm. Um, San Diego, El Centro, that's in, in Imperial Valley. I basically, I speak Spanish not great, fairly well. Actually, mm -hmm. I think better than I speak Japanese <laughs> because Thanks. I lived there and then uh, moved to Oxnard and lived up in Ventura County for you know, nice. most of my days until I moved to LA around 18, 19 and tried to So high school pursuit. was in Oxnard mostly? Yeah. Real Mesa. Okay. Yeah. Awesome, man. And when did you, when did you get into, to martial arts? Like what, what was your first martial art? I remember in San Diego, uh, I was second grade, third grade, and we were going to Taekwondo and, um, my sister continued to pursue that. And she, she had won many awards in California, um, as a martial artist doing Cal, uh, Taekwondo. Wow. And she dated some really tough dudes, man. She dated like <laughs> drug addicts and like some bad guys. So for me, it was like, all right, well, the one guy she dated was Jeremy the Scorpion Jackson, who was on Ultimate Fighter season two, I believe. And wow. he knocked, I think he knocked out Nate Diaz back in the day. Like this, wow. that's who he was, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. he would train me after school. After, so I'd go to weight training in the morning in high school. Uh, I had football practice or wrestling or, or track. Then I'd go to weight training after and I come home and then he's like, let's go, you know, we're going to jujitsu, we're going to train MMA. And I go to the school with him and it was just me, him and whoever, whatever we can round about on the streets. And we would just like go at it with these guys and I'd get my butt kicked every day. But he was always like, you're strong, you're tough. You have the hardest punch I've ever felt. Like you can do this if you want. And I was like, all right, let's go. Like, like I'm going to be a fighter. And then one day I got my eye busted open and I was like, I'm done, man. I'm done. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah, dude, he split my eye open. I got the scar yeah. here. And um, wow. I, I kind of made the decision. That was I was it. like, Am I, I'm either going to be an actor because I always wanted to be an actor or I'm going to sure. be a fighter. And I was honestly, uh, like I said, I don't have to discipline. I'm, I'm, I'm very emotional. <laughs> so I was right. like, yeah, I'm going to follow the, follow my heart. Right. Wow. That's so awesome, now when you were doing those trainings, was it, I mean, were you wearing like headgear and stuff or were you guys just like free and like actually beating each other up? It, it wasn't like just a, it wasn't like a fight club, you know, like I'd like sure. to pretend that I was like as badass as uh, uh, Brad Pitt. And Well, we're, we, it still sounds badass no matter how you describe it. So don't, <laughs> yeah. don't worry about it. Like you're getting punched. Yeah. You're, so you're Edward yeah, Norton, right? That's yeah, right. Edward Norton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Norton what a great actor. Like, but no, I mean, we'd go there and we would train just, you know, okay, you're in the, you're in full guard work your right. way to half guard uh so we would just train different drills here's an arm bar here's a triangle choke here's your guillotine um okay so <clears throat> we would take then fighters from both ends and we would say okay tell us from one thing you learned today you're going to roll with this other person and you're going to mm -hmm. work and you're going to try and submit him with that one thing you learned mm -hmm. so for me it was like okay well uh, i was i had perfected the triangle choke so if anyone ever told me do a triangle i was like okay cool I got slammed by this 320 pounds, six foot five lineman <clears throat> at Oxnard College. And we were like, all right, let's go. So we get in the ring and he just grabs me, jumps and jumps on me and smushes me in his arms. Like I felt like they snapped my back. And oh. I remember just laying there and I was trying to scream, but nothing was coming out. And I was like, oh. and then he's like, he's just pounding. I'm like, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like trying to block, block, block. And I'm like, I thought, you know, I'm, aren't we doing like, 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 uh, aren't we doing tap submission? We're not doing knockout. Like, what is this? <laughs> But he just went in. So I was like, oh, my God. But, you know, you'll find that a lot of people just naturally, instinctively just go street fight. They, they just start oh, to yeah, swing yeah, yeah. when you yeah. find them off the street. That's why a lot of white belts are pretty dangerous when you when you roll them. Well, now I'm talking like I know what I'm talking about. I, I have not trained in many. I mean, decades, like I'm hundreds of years. Like I'm, I'm a man. I wouldn't say hundreds of years, but, <laughs> but this is no, a good but, uh, way to circle right, circle right back to our <laughs> fight scene on Beyond Salem because you did have great control, and it was just, it was just fun, man. Listen, um, can I? I, I, I will go ahead. Um, the it occurred to me, you know, the, the, your kind of multi multidisciplinary career. Now, obviously, you know, you've been going back and forth between single camera and you know multi camera and soaps, and you know, 
combining your instinctual gifts with voiceover. So like, I, I haven't done a lot of voiceover and, but I imagine some of it is paint by numbers a little bit because there's a specific sound that you probably, or a specific take of a line that you imagine is right for the genre, for this character, how this character would sound in the DC universe or whatever. And, but also you have instinctual ideas as well. Now, how, how does it all match up? And, and is there a creative process for one of those genres that feeds you more? Or, I mean, I'm sure it's cool to do all of them, but like, how is the approach different? Um, I grew up with cartoons, love cartoons. I grew up with anime, love anime. Um, I got to do Star Wars Visions. That was a perfect mix between Star Wars, Jedi, and uh, Japanese animation. That's on Disney+. Mm. Plus. Please watch it. We're nominated for an Emmy right now. It's amazing. Cool. I love awesome, the series. Dude. Congrats. Um, That's great. In reference to voiceover, Mary Elizabeth McGlynn, she is phenomenal. She was on our show, uh, Star Wars Resistance, and she uh, basically, I didn't know what I was doing, like I said. My second audition, I'm the lead of a huge franchise. I'm like, I'm panicking a little bit. I needed permission because I still fall into that mindset where sometimes, you know what? I'm that insecure young kid who's the new kid in town because we move all the time. Who's got a sister with Down syndrome, a mother who doesn't speak English, and another sister who likes to get in fights. Like, so I'm the, the black sheep, right? Um, so anyway, I find myself kind of like uh, there on set and... I start to get into the shell, like, holy crap, I'm not doing a great job. I get a call, my agent wants to meet with me and they're like, so uh, good news, they would like you to take acting classes and voiceover, you know, voiceover lessons. And I was like, yes, thank you, thank you so much. And like, oh, great, we were nervous. You know, I said, no, I need them, I want them, please. We start taking classes with Mary Elizabeth McGlynn who became the, the director in the series. And she basically was like, uh, let's see what you got. You know, and we sat down and she basically put me in a room and we started working. She said, like, go for it. And I went for it. And she's like, that's all you needed. You just needed the permission, you know? And the one thing that I learned from that was basically uh, as an actor, again, our instincts will take over. I can play roles, but I might not sound the right way. Like, like me, I like to be fun, bubbly, very similar to you, Baffer, like up energy, high, positive. It seems like yeah. you and I are very similar. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that's freaking a wonderful quality. Uh, but can you play a tough badass like Steve Burton? Like, I don't know, like that's right. hard to do, right? Um, right? And if you have that ability and you have that range, good on you. If not, then hey, that's cool. At least you can master that charismatic, that charm, that's what you got, you know? That uh, Mr. Personality, right? Like you have sure, that. Yeah. Um, I never won any awards for it though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I've got mine. Some Google grab that statue. No, I'm gonna... <laughs> what is, yeah, I was gonna say, what does your Mr. Personality statue look like? It's just a glass cut thing. It doesn't matter. No, it, anyway. It, uh, okay. <laughs> but the one thing I learned from voiceover was basically she said, uh, you know, they on like on camera, they can see the eyebrow raise. And so I don't mm -hmm. have to say, like, well, what were you doing? You know? So she says, did... since you can't see that, yeah, you need to hear it in the voice. So give right. us 10% more. Mm, interesting what were you doing see there there in the voice you can hear it compared to the eyebrow you can see it so there's the different like tools that are necessary for the different jobs right yeah and uh, with voiceover you can really go nuts you can really like exacerbate your face and like i like to do I facial do. expressions like i'm, I'm right. very cartoon well that, that affects your sound well that affects your sound i used to this is a, a strange comparison but i i was a dj in high school like a radio dj in high school well not quite it was an oldie station but um, <laughs> um but uh an actual dj yeah so oh yeah hey welcome back yeah um so but what was interesting it's like they you know we were taught to speak with a smile yes you know what yes, i mean yes. and and, and so that was that too. yeah and, and 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 how that affects the sound um mm. and and so that that i learned that at an early age but i, I never it never and, and having not done voiceover work there, that must be so cool. It must be really freeing to, if you want to say over-exaggerate your expressions, but just because that, that really affects your sound. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it does like, you know, a lot of actors, because it's voiceover, you can just show up and read the lines off the paper. And if you're that yeah. talented where you can like, just 
create so much in the moment, wonderful. Yeah. Me, I like to study. I like to make acting choices. The cool yeah. thing was they, they uh, snuck me, just me, myself, out of the entire cast. They're like, hey, Christopher, um, what do you think about flying to New York and working with Oscar Isaac? I was like, are you kidding me? Oscar Isaac wants to reprise his role as Poe Dameron and in our series. He wants to do it. Are you cool working with him? And I was like, dude, am I? Yeah, like, yes, yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah. So they fly me to New York. Um, I watch him perform Hamlet off Broadway. Mm. The guy's incredible. They're yeah. giving him steroid shots in his throat because he's doing two performances, sometimes twice a week, you know, mm. eight shows a week. The guy. Mm. Um, yeah, that's a lot of it, that's a lot of taxation on your voice. Yeah, for sure. And Hamlet of all projects, that's a lot he's of got words. Dialogue and dialogue, right? Just it, it just rolls out red carpet like the guy's gone. I watched him perform. He was incredible. Um, I tried not to cough, and you know, you start getting that little itch in your throat, and you're trying yeah. not to cough the entire time. It's like, <clears throat> dude, throughout his performance, I was doing that. I was so embarrassed. Then I was like, ah, <laughs> doing those nasty coughs. <laughs> And then I was like, oh my God, I'm the worst. Anyway, uh, uh, I watched him perform. And the next day I was like, all right, I'm going to show up an hour early. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to knock his socks off. And I get there and he's, he's already having tea. And he's like, hey, man, I love your character. You're doing a great job. And I was like, the dude's, he's, he's the ample professional, man. He's That's incredible. Awesome. And we worked together um, in the room. And he's him. He graduated Juilliard. And he really guides you as an actor. Like when you're working with strong actors, Sure. You don't, you don't have to really make the choices because they can make them for you. There's a good and a bad with that. It's easy to do that, but then you'll get lost in the scene as an actor. You well, sure. disappear because they're the leader and everyone loves the leader. That can be a trap though, because <clears throat> if you just get into the habit of reacting to what they're bringing, then you're not necessarily affecting them. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah, you, 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 that's, the, that's, the, that's the choice. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah, but no, that's exactly yeah. it. As an actor, it's your job to volley, like a tennis yes. match, to get in there and to hit him with something he wasn't expecting. Sure. So I knew he wanted me to bring the scene down in certain areas. I felt it. He's like, well, why would you do that? And then my character and my choice was, well, what do you mean? Why would I do that? So I, I flipped it on him. Right. And he's like, and immediately I saw him kind of like kick back on his heels. And he was like, well, what are you? And then we started yelling right. at each other. Would right. you go here? Would you? And the scene just took life again. And the, and the, the producers and directors are like, that, that's the chemistry we want. That was why we flew you out. Like, way to freaking go. And I left there and they're like, you guys had the best chemistry. And I was like, it's Oscar Isaac, man. Like, how do you not have chemistry? Right, right. sure, sure. But sure. it's also the idea that if you're not bringing anything to the table, then you become bland. You become sure. the peas on the plate, you know, the frozen peas. Right. You don't want to be that, right? Yeah. Right. I'm sorry if you love peas, but <laughs> frozen uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> I tried them once. I don't know. Uh, hey, no. I put them on my lower back. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And then my tendonitis. There you go. Yeah, we're old. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's right. the idea. Like, at, yeah, on and that makes a lot of sense. Compared to voiceover, right? Yeah. 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 That's cool, man. Well, from yeah, indeed, from Oscar Isaac to Steve Burton, who'd have hey. thought? Who'd yeah. have thought? <laughs> hey, where, where can we find you on social? Because I know you're doing a lot of cons, which I'm starting to do this year, actually. Nice. So I might see you at some, dude. You never know. My man, we're doing, uh, I have a panel at San Diego Comic-Con. So I'm, it's been on my bucket list. It's been a dream in my mind. Wow, dude, that's, that's awesome. really cool. For which show? For uh, Gotham Knights. Uh, the video okay, yeah, cool. It yeah. comes out on um, PlayStation 5, Xbox X, and I think PC as well. Only like awesome, the top tier uh, video game consoles. So and, my, um, PS4, my PS4 won't do it? Ah, uh, listen, uh, my man. Uh, <laughs> listen, upgrade, dude. <laughs> no, no, I apologize. They actually were making it for that, but they wanted to keep, they wanted to keep it top tier, you know, operational. Sure, so, sure. I mean, the project when you see it, like, you get to truly traverse Gotham City. It's that's cool. Wow. Awesome, dude. That I mean, like, cool, it's cool. you're fully engrossed in that world. Amazing. So, July twenty first. Yeah, and outside of that. Uh, I was doing a few conventions here and there uh, for different projects, but I believe that when Gotham Knights comes out on October 25th, that'll be a big thing. I got a movie I'm working on that'll come out in 2024. I'm the lead of, which is amazing. Awesome, dude. Um, I got another secret project comes out in 2023 and Beyond Salem came out. That's on Peacock Plus. Where you yes. Can see, uh, Steve Burton running around, kicking everyone's butt, taking names. Me wearing lots of around. hats. Lots of hats. Wearing hats, hats taking tables out and people. Uh, amazing. <laughs> 
Um, yeah. yeah. So we're, if people want to find more about what you're doing, is there any place we can direct them social wise yes. or anything like Instagram. that? Instagram. I'm the most yeah. active on Instagram. I almost respond to every DM. I try to. Um, wow. It's wow. at Mr. Christopher Sean, my name, right. MR Christopher Sean. That's S E A N. Awesome, awesome. Cool, man. Hey, dude, thanks again so much for taking the time out. Yeah. Really appreciate it. You're such a great guy. Yes, indeed. Awesome. Uh, next time uh, we can talk less about Steve, but it was really nice. <laughs> Uh, never, never. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, have hey, been a real pleasure getting to know you and uh, look forward Rapid, to thank you. talking more in the future. Yeah, dude. Awesome guys. Rock All and right. roll. Thank you. Thank Peace. you.